All right, boys and girls, we're going to take a look at the book that Dominic chose. All right, Dominic. Let's see. I'm going to stick you down here. <gasps> Merry Moosey Christmas. I'm so glad somebody pulled this book out. Let's take a look at the cover. Hmm. Do you think these moose can really fly? Look carefully. What do you see? And what do you see that's going to help them? Guide their way through the dark, dark outer space. Let's see what you think. Did anybody guess the flashlight on Moose's head? If you did, give yourself a thumbs up. Did anybody see the rocket ship on his back? Give yourself a thumbs up if you did. All right, let's take a look at this story. Merry Moosey Christmas. Everyone deserves a holiday break. Please, Santa, please, begged Rudolph. Just this once, can I please have Christmas Eve off? Oh, Santa looks skeptical. Rudolph persisted. That means he kept on asking. I've never had a chance to stay home on Christmas Eve and listen for the jingling sleigh bells on the roof and whoosh down the chimney and presents for just me. Well, poor Rudolph looks like he needs a break. Santa's heart was as soft as his belly. Ho, 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 he laughed. Okay, Rudy, just this once. But first, we must find a worthy replacement to lead my sleigh. One on the most special night of the year. And you must help me train him. So Santa and Rudolph set off in search for the perfect substitute. Well, what about him? Asked Santa. Mm, wrong size, said Rudolph. How about that one, Santa pointed. Oh, too feathery, said Santa. So added Rudolph. Uh, antlers, asked Santa. Horns, said Rudolph. Discouraged, Santa and Rudolph flew northward. Sorry, Rudy, said Santa. It looks like you won't get Christmas Eve off after all this year. Whoa, wait, look through the binoculars. What does he see? They landed on the sleigh at the edge of the forest. Rudolph and Santa measured and poked and prodded. Should do, hmm. would do, could do with a little training, they agreed. Hmm. They kind of look similar, don't they? The moose seemed willing. What should we teach him first, asked Santa. Nose glowing, answered Rudolph. Rudolph stood in front of the moose and made his nose go flashity flash flash. Now you try it, said Rudolph. Just think bright thoughts. Moose thought about a hot sunny days and car headlights. He grunted, he groaned, he held his breath. He stood on his head until his face turned red, but his nose did not glow. Maybe this will work. Santa offered a clown nose out of a sack. Rudolph shook his head. Sorry, Santa. It looks funny, and it doesn't shine. The moose held a hoof up and said, Whoa, wait a minute, and then he raced down the road. He was back in a flash, wearing a headlamp. That's not a nose, said Santa. Shines plenty of light, said Rudolph. It'll help you find your way. It'll do, Santa and Rudolph agreed. What's next, asked Santa. Flying, answered Rudolph. Rudolph took a few flying leaps over the moose's head. Leapity leap leap. Now you try it, said Rudolph. Just think soaring thoughts. Moose thought about gliding eagles and float planes taking off from the lake. Moose stood on his back of his tippy toes. He flapped his front legs while Rudolph gave him a boost. But he did not lift off the ground. Not even a little itty bitty bit. Well, maybe this will work. Out of his sack, Santa pulled a beanie cap with a propeller. Rudolph shook his head. Sorry, Santa. That looks silly, and it would take a much bigger propeller to lift that big fella. Moose held up his hoof as if to say, wait a minute, and raced down the road again. Boy, this moose is pretty smart. This time, he whizzed back with a jetpack on. Santa and Rudolph looked at each other and agreed, it'll do. 
What's next? asked Santa. Directions, answered Rudolph. Rudolph gave lectures on the North Star, latitude and longitude, and traveling through different time zones. Yakety yak yak. Now you try it, said Rudolph. Just think. Gilding thoughts. The moose thought about hunters and compasses and signs telling out-of-staters where to go. The moose pointed north with his snout and south with his antlers, east with his front legs and west with his back legs. Maybe this will help, said Santa, and Santa pulled out a globe out of his sack. Sorry, Santa, he's going to need more details to find his streets and addresses. Then Moose held up his hoof and said, wait a minute, and then raced back down the road. Oh my goodness, look what he has hooked onto his head. He found a way back with a GPS strapped to his antlers. <gasps> I wonder if it's Google Maps. Santa and Rudolph nodded. It'll do. <gasps> Maybe it's NORAD. And I think Nico picked that book. We'll have to read that one tomorrow. What's next, asked Santa. Rudolph thought out loud. Let's see. Nose glowing, flying directions. Seems like there's just one more thing. But I can't remember what it is. Couldn't be too important, said Santa. Well, if I think of it, I'll let you know. Rudolph told the moose. In the meantime, practice, practice, practice. And arrive at the North Pole at dusk on Christmas Eve ready to go. Thanks, Moosey, added Santa, giving Moose a pat. Santa and Rudolph headed back to the North Pole, where they were busy, busy, busy getting ready for Christmas Eve, and Moose stayed home where he was getting dizzy, 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 getting ready for Christmas Eve. So he's practicing. He's following the directions. Let's find out. Moose couldn't help himself. He was so anxious that he arrived at the North Pole at dawn on Christmas Eve. Eve day. He tried to stay out of the way while Santa, Rudolph, and the elves and all the other reindeer finished up all the final preparations for the big night. Rudolph stayed with the sleigh until the last second, making sure everything was perfect. Not having any second thoughts about staying home this year, are you, Rudy? asked Santa. Rudolph gulped a big gulp. Oh, he leaned over and whispered, doesn't matter if I were. Look how excited this big guy is having to turn to lead your sleigh. You're right, Santa winked, but still it won't be the same without you. Rudolph turned for his home before <clears throat> turned for home before more than his nose turned red. At last it was time to go. Giddy up, shouted Santa. Moose soared skyward, Santa ordered. To Rudy's house first, Moosey. He has been waiting a lifetime for a special night. We mustn't keep him waiting. Moose flew straight to Rudolph's house, slow and steady. Rudolph had barely been home long enough to set out peanut butter and cookies for Santa, his favorites, and blueberry muffins for Moose to make him feel right at home. To his surprise, he heard the sleigh bells. It, could it be Santa arriving already? Rudolph jumped in the bed and pretended to be asleep. He listened for the whoosh down the chimney, but instead he heard, uh-oh, uh-oh. I think I figure it out. Crash, bang, boom. Oh, is that what Rudolph forgot to told to teach Moosey how to land? Let's find out. Rudolph jumped out of bed and looked up the chimney. Santa rolled out of the sled and looked down the chimney. They shouted together, landings. We forgot to teach him how to do landings. Rudolph hurried up onto the roof and helped Right, helped right to the sleigh, but before he could utter a word on how to do landings, the move held up his hoof as to say, wait a minute. Rudolph interrupted, I know, climb in, I'll take you. Rudolph jetted his sleigh back to Moosey's favorite store. They'll do, Santa said, and Rudolph agreed. Hurry, there's no time to waste. Millions of kids are counting on you, Rudolph shouted. Santa snapped the reins and the sleigh lifted off and Moosey was leading the way. Now he's got some skis. <laughs> and that Christmas Eve, some, th some, pretending to, some pretending to be fast asleep children not only heard jingling bells of sleigh bells and a whoosh down the chimney, but they also heard Merry Moosey Christmas and to all a good night. The end. That was a great story. I'm glad I picked that one out of the library. So thank you, Dominic, for choosing that one to share with us. All right, boys and girls, I'll see you tomorrow.